Hey guys, this is Tomek. In my previous video I've created the quick start for Google Kubernetes engine. In this one I want to show you the difference between the imperative and the declarative approach when managing the Kubernetes objects. So um, this one will be more command line friendly, I suppose. Uh, let me first start with creating the cluster again from the command line so you can see how simple that is. All you have to do is to specify the zone or region on which one the cluster is being created. There are trillion of different options but most of them have some default values so all you have to specify is the cluster name and the zone or region. It will take a couple of minutes before the cluster is up and running so in the meantime let me explain what I'm going to do. I will do the pretty much the same job imperatively and declaratively. I will create the deployment with the container hello app and expose it uh, via load balancer type of service. Uh, so the question is what's the difference between the imperative and the declarative approach? Imperative approach is tell me what to do. Create the deployment, create the port, expose the deployment, scale up the deployment, etc. On the other hand, declarative approach describes the state you want to have. So you tell Kubernetes you want to have the deployment with free replicas exposed via load balancer service and that's the end state you want to achieve. And you can do that by describing the objects in the YAML format. So let's do it on the example. Let's start with the imperative approach. The cluster is created. Before we start, I will split the screen. This way, on the right hand side, we can observe the resources which are deployed on the cluster and the left hand side will be used to execute the commands. Uh, to do it, I will execute watch with parameter 1, which means it will refresh every one second with the command kubectl get all. Alright, the right hand side is ready. Let me also adjust the prompt of my session so it doesn't take the whole screen. Okay, and we are good to go. So the first command is to imperatively create the deployment. Uh, once the command is executed, you can notice the changes on the right hand side. I will use the Google sample uh, image called hello app in version 1.0. As you can see, this command created deployment, which as a consequence is created a replica set and also a port. To scale up the application to free replicas, I can do that with kubectl scale deployment and specify the number of replicas. Notice the new pods are being created, done. Alright, let me scale it back to 1. Unnecessary pods are being terminated and in the background the next task is to expose our application to the external world. I will do that with kubectl expose deployment with type of load balancer and specify the port and target port and that will create the service with type load balancer. It will take minute or two before the external IP is ready for us. And that was the imperative approach. What about the declarative approach? How to create those YAML files which will describe the state? Well, for that you can navigate to official Kubernetes documentation page. Uh, that's kubernetes.io. By the way, this page is very useful with a lot of tutorials, a lot of getting started documents, etc. But in my case, let me search for the deployments. And the first result is what I want. Uh, this quite big document describing the deployments, use cases, etc. And we can find the example of the YAML file. So it doesn't look that user friendly at the beginning. But once you understand it a bit better, it's, it's actually quite easy to read. There is also a really nice trick with kubectl tool to generate the YAML file for us. We can actually reuse the commands we use imperatively, specify that this time we just want to run them in dry run and specify the output format to YAML. And this way the output will be printed on the screen. As you can see we've got our YAML printed and uh, to save it we can redirect the output to the file. So for that let me check my directories. Alright, let's create the empty directory for our application, let's call it app2. And we run the same command with uh, redirecting the output to file called deployment.yaml. And that's it. 
uh, where a file with the deployment is created. Obviously that's just the file, nothing was changed on the cluster itself. Uh, let me open the shell editor, you can see that the file is there, it has our deployment definition. Perfect. So what about the service? Well, we can do the same trick. Let me search in the history for the expose command. Okay, uh, let's do it again with the dry run type of client. So the request will not be sent to server. Uh, output YAML and we've got our service on the screen. So again, doing the same trick, let me redirect the output of this command to the file. And uh, I will call that service.yaml. Obviously the file name doesn't matter, but it's helpful to use something meaningful in the future. So we do have our two files ready in the directory called app2. Let's review them. There's deployment YAML and service YAML. Alright, before showing you the declarative approach, let me edit the files a little bit as well. I will change the name and labels from app1 to app2. So once this is deployed, it will be easier to see the difference from what was deployed uh, imperatively versus what was deployed declaratively. Uh, Alright, it seems that the deployment YAML is already done. Uh, as you can see, the autosave is enabled, so uh, I don't have to save the file. It's done automatically once the changes are done. And let me change the service.yaml as well. This is done. And yep, and I think we will be ready to deploy the application. Just quickly review the files, and that's one of the advantages of the declarative approach. You do have your state within the file, so you can. Uh, well, be very specific and review it before the deployment. All right, and to deploy it, let's use kubectl apply minus f, which means there will be files from up to directory. And that's it. As you can see, the deployment was created and service as well. On the right hand side, you can see that our objects were created as well. All right, so to do some changes, for example, scale the application to three replicas, all I have to do is to change the YAML file, specifying deployment YAML to three replicas, save it, and just apply the changes again. So I'm not saying uh, to Kubernetes, hey, do the change. I'm saying to Kubernetes, hey, my target state change it, apply it. And I don't care how it's done, it just have to be done. I could even use the command kubectl diff, to tell me what would have to be changed between the current state and the resources described in the YAML files. In this case, that was a simple uh, scaling up. Uh, okay, our external IP is ready for the application too, so actually let's try to access it. Uh, defining the IP address and we've got the response from one of the ports with up to in the name. All right, so let's do some other changes. For example, let's try to perhaps update our application. Uh, there is a container with tag uh, version 2.0 for the Hello app. Let me change the image in the deployment.yaml, save the file, saved automatically, and apply the changes again. Now pay attention on the right hand side what will happen. The deployment rollout was triggered since the version of the image has changed. It created a new replica set with pods containing new version and eventually the pods from up to are being replaced one by one with the updated version to reach the target state of three replicas with the new 2.0 hello app version. Of course the update strategy can be fully customized in our definition of our deployment. Okay, the rollout was completed, so let's check the version, pay attention to version, once refresh it's 2.0. Not a big change, but that's just for the demo purposes. Um, to remove all the objects, I can also run just a simple command kubectl delete minus f and specify the directory of our application, and all objects described in the directory will be automatically removed. And with my YAML configuration, I'm able to quickly recreate the objects, uh, put them into source control, version them, etc., share them, uh, move them to different clusters. 
So that's the biggest difference between the imperative approach and declarative approach. The imperative is also useful, especially when you want to test something or uh, put something very quickly or use it even with the dry run option to, well, to generate the YAML file for yourself, which can be updated in the future. And the declarative approach is very uh, useful for um, having the infrastructure well written in the almost infrastructure as a code, right? So infrastructure is written in the configuration file or many files and can be uh, version controlled uh, and can be shared and um, can be modified very quickly and the exact copy of the environment can be quickly created in different namespace for example. Okay, enough talking. Thanks for watching. Uh, check out my channel for other videos related to Google Cloud, Kubernetes and containers. Thanks and bye.